Are you a dropshipper and you heard about how important Q4 is and you're not exactly sure how to prepare? And maybe you have the marketing side ready and, that, and that's all good, but uh, you're really not sure how to get your supply chain and operations ready in the best way. Or maybe you had bad experiences before in previous Q4s with supply chain issues. Hi everyone, this is Dayu from Ecom Ops. Today I'm going to talk about Q4 and how to prepare for Q4 dropshipping in advance with a focus on the supply chain. Now this is a second part of a multi-part series on Q4 preparation. Uh, I'm going to link to the first video below that talks a lot more about why Q4 is so important, why Q4 2020 is so important. Uh, so check that out as well if you want some more context. All right, so today we're gonna go over why do you need to start planning for Q4 ASAP? So when this video launches, it's gonna be late September. You should be planning for Q4 now or even earlier, but as early as possible. We're gonna talk about how to prepare your supply chain to scale through Q4 with confidence. And then finally, we'll talk about some key dates to remember and how you should prepare for them through Q4. All right, so first let's talk about why do you need to start planning for Q4 as soon as possible. Now, again, I have a much more detailed video on this. I'll link to it below, so check that out as well if you want more context here. So first of all, if you guys have been in this game for a while, you know that product testing is not easy and it takes time. Even for more experienced clients, we see that for every 10 products, three might be profitable, but only one or a couple are actually worth scaling. So this takes a lot of time. So you really wanna be testing earlier than you. You'll be testing right now or as early as possible so that by October, you're validating and optimizing these products. And by November, you already know the the product or the products that you're scaling hard and really focusing on that and preparing your supply chain around that. And on the fulfillment side, honestly, a lot of newer dropshippers, they think that it somehow works like magic. You market, you make money, you press a couple of buttons and something happens and it gets delivered. Uh, it's not magic. It doesn't work like that. The supply chain, honestly, is relatively complicated with a lot of different relationships that really matter. Uh, factories, suppliers, couriers, and of course with a store owner. And the other thing is that especially during Q4, some private suppliers like us are going to start limiting or not taking in new clients to focus on existing ones. And even couriers like Unixpress, they actually tend to uh, not take in new supply or new agent clients around Q4 as well. So it's really important to plan for these things as early as possible because these relationships, uh, these processes take time to get right and you don't want to do it when it really matters the most. All right, so then now let's talk about how do you actually prepare your supply chain to scale effectively through Q4. So first of all, this is not exactly supply chain, but this is so important is that you want to pick your winners as soon as possible, really as early as possible. Uh, ideally, you want to pick it by October uh, and you want to start preparing production plans and everything like that for your winning product because that is going to be the only way that you can scale as high as possible. Uh, remember, and I talked about this in my previous video, is that Preparing your supply chain for Q4 is not only reducing issues, reducing costs, of refunds and things like that, but it's also preparing your capacity so that you can scale confidently. And that's how you turn uh, what could be a six figure Q4 into a seven or eight figure Q4 because you have that confidence to scale because you have the production capacity and supply chain to support it. All right, so the first step, if you don't have this already, is that you really have to pick the right supplier to scale through Q4. And the thing is, what works fine during normal times or testing products is not going to work well during Q4 scaling. So a couple of things to be really careful of is one, uh, AliExpress sellers. AliExpress sellers uh, do not scale with them through Q4. They generally don't hold much stock or any stock at all. And uh, they you're going to run out. And they generally have have much lower shipping speeds. Uh, you generally want to avoid large platforms, uh, you know, something like CJ. I mean, they could be okay if you get lucky, but there's a relatively lack of transparency on what's going on, how they plan things for you, and there's really kind of a lack of a personal attention 
to really scale your business to your needs. And uh, you generally want to avoid newer and smaller agents as well. Uh, newer agents sometimes or many times are just like one person or a couple people and they're going to find a lot of difficulties to scale if you're doing, you know, 500 orders per day all of a sudden and they can't keep up and that's going to create huge issues for you. And generally speaking, these smaller agents, they don't have the same kind of relationships with large factories and uh, production planning ability, which means that they're not going to be able to plan for your needed capacity to scale. Now, once you find a great supplier, ideally a larger, more established private agent like us, as soon as possible, uh, probably now, is you want to reach out to your agent and talk to your agent about okay, you know, here are some of the things that we really need, need, need to figure out. So what are going to be the lead times and production limits for your product? And how is that going to change actually through Q4 as well? Because even now it's not as busy as Q4. So a lead time of two, three days might extend to maybe even one to two weeks. And uh, maybe a factories literally have a capacity limit of 1000 per day. So you can't do more than that. So you need to know these things far in advance. Uh, you also want to communicate with your supplier agent on your own marketing and scaling plans. It's never going to be perfect, but if you communicate your plans to your agent, that means that they can work better to help you plan your production and your inventory stocking. You generally want to get an estimated cutoff date for orders to arrive before Christmas. Now, right now in September, it's going to be a little bit earlier to do that because it's kind of hard to tell, but this is something that you definitely want to have a good idea sometime in November or so, so that you know how to communicate with your customers and when is your last shipping date for Christmas, assuming that you want them to get there by Christmas. And finally, uh, related to that, you also, once you know that, you want to plan for clear messaging to customers on shipping times, given your production situation, your lead times, processing times, and if or if not, it's going to arrive by Christmas, you got to plan for all of that messaging far ahead. And once you get all this information, you want to start working with your supplier on how do you want to plan for your inventory uh, both now and through Q4. And it might differ depending on what time it is. So generally speaking, there's three main options that you can work with a private agent on in terms of preparing inventory. So one is, do you just order inventory as you get orders? And obviously, if you do that, it's less risk on you but it means that a certain amount of lead time every single time you, you get an order and that's fulfilled uh, do you order X days five days seven days of inventory in advance uh, and kind of have your agent try to predict how your orders are going to grow through time uh, or third do you want to just say hey let's get like 5,000 units because I want this product to blow up and I want to have very fast fulfillment now this is really important to decide with your supplier. Now, generally speaking, uh, what I have here is that this top option, ordering inventory as you get orders, this is fine if the lead times for your product are very short. You know, if it only takes like one to three days uh, to get your product to your agent and ship it, then that's not that big of a deal. And also if you have consistent sales volumes, right? If you're predictably like 50 orders per day, you can kind of do this more. And then on the bottom here, this is where if your lead times are longer, if your product is hot and there's one week, two week lead times and you feel really great about this product and you expect to sell huge, then this is something that you might want to consider getting a thousand, two thousand units at a time predicting uh, the rush so that you don't have a lot of unhappy customers waiting if there are lead time concerns. Now, generally speaking, again, this uh, has a factor of timing. Normally speaking, now in September, you can get away with the top two options, ordering inventory as you go or order X days of inventory in advance. But as it gets closer, as production gets tighter, you really want to consider, do you just want to buy large batches at a time, hold it with your agent so that you get more steady fulfillment going forward with less risk? 
Now, obviously, shipping speed is really important. It's going to be especially important in Q4 when people are waiting for their gifts. So whatever you're using now, you definitely want to consider in Q4 to use uh, as good, as efficient of a shipping option as possible. So you want to avoid stuff like ePacket. You want to avoid stuff like AliExpress Standard. They're less reliable, especially during Q4. And you really want to pick one of these special lines. So the one that we generally really recommend is Unixpress Express express lines. Uh, we think that's the most reliable, that's the fastest, and it's still cost effective as well. Uh, but you know, CNE works as well, 4PX works, UBI works as well. Uh, Yan Wen, I think, is not great. It's kind of a special line, but it's very inconsistent around Q4, so I generally try to avoid that. Uh, but yeah, definitely try to pick a faster shipping option. And normally, even if you're not using express line options for Unixpress, for example, in the last couple weeks before Christmas, you probably want to upgrade to that just to make sure you have more consistent deliveries when it really matters. And if you have a product, if you have a generic product and you want to brand it, you want to customize it, you got to do that right now. You got to start ASAP. The design process, uh, you know, the the iteration process, the lead time, the MOQs, these are things that you need to start on as soon as possible and definitely get ready before uh, Q4 even starts really, but just as soon as possible. You definitely want to make sure that you have a perfect or as great as possible communications process with your supplier or agent. I mean, this is one of the reasons why you want to start finding agents as soon as possible, even before you start major scaling, is because you want to make sure you can communicate with them and you want to make sure the process is as efficient as possible because it is so important to you in Q4. So you want to make sure they communicate well, right? They have good English, they understand your needs, uh, they uh, are transparent with issues and they actually give you advice and help you troubleshoot issues and work with you to build and grow your business. And you want to make sure they have the right processes, right? They have the effective tools to communicate like Skype group, uh, WhatsApp, whatever it might be. We personally use Skype groups, but some agents use something else. Uh, you want to make sure that there's some kind of communication process that's very clear. Who do I talk to if there's issues? Uh, what is the process for doing so? You know, this is something that you need to get clear. And and generally speaking, especially through Q4, or really anytime you're scaling hard, you want to be in frequent contact with your agent or, or with your agent teams. You want to make sure that they're constantly able to respond to you, uh, maybe not every hour, but at least every day, every business day to make sure that everything is going smooth and there is bilateral communications. This part is something that I don't want to see a lot of people talk about actually, but you want to make sure you want to confirm your payment terms and details with your supplier. You gotta figure out beforehand, do you need to pay in advance? Uh, do you need to carry a balance? You need to have a deposit in place. Are they gonna give you some credit? Can they take you some, uh, can they give you some inventory risk? Can they pre-stock some units without you paying upfront? Now, different agents are gonna do very different things and it probably depends on how long they work with you and the risk of your product. Uh, but these are things that you really wanna figure out in advance because you know a lot of times I hear about clients uh, or not, not our clients but dropshippers having huge issues because they thought that their supplier was sending out hundreds of orders and then weeks go by and nothing happens and they reach out hey what's up and the supplier is like well you didn't pay us yet right so just stuff like that uh, it's not even just a payment thing but you got to make sure that you know what the payment process is so that payments is not going to be just a dumb blocker to getting stuff moving as efficiently as possible. So if you're a dropshipper or maybe you're a dropshipping guru, you made a lot of money maybe or you're inspired to do this, if you can afford to buy it, a Lambo or a car or whatever or spend a ton of cash, don't do it. Uh, don't do that. Uh, wait to buy your stuff until after Q4. Make sure you have enough cash to actually support scaling. Following up the payment uh, slide that we just talked about, you need to have cash and you need to figure out like how to pay your supplier. So don't get crazy with your money. Save a lot of money to make sure you can scale smoothly. 
You want to also really confirm clearly what your supplier's after sales policy is. What happens if, uh, sh uh, if packages get lost? What happens if they get damaged? And not just the policy though, but you want to confirm how do you actually work with them to get these resolved? How do they actually compensate or take action? How long does it take them to take action? And what kind of proof do they need? Now, this is really important because if like say an AliExpress seller tells you, oh, don't worry, we'll be responsible for lost packages, but then uh, something happens and then they're like, oh, just wait 60 more days and we'll figure out what happens. Well, what do you tell your customer, right? So having a very efficient process and making sure that action is taken swiftly so you can tell your customer what is going on and either resend or refund that's going to do wonders to avoid uh, huge issues like chargebacks and refunds and other issues through Q4. And on the general store operation side, make sure you have enough staff to handle much higher volumes. Now, you know, maybe you're a relatively new dropshipper, you've been kind of just working by yourself and everything is fine, but when you scale, you need a lot more people. I mean, both from marketing and content creation and also just VAs to engage with potential customers and dealing with order issues. When you scale from 50 orders today, uh, a day to 500 orders per day, the customer service issues, they really multiply by a huge amount. So if you do not prepare in advance, you're going to have a lot of issues, not being able to respond to customers, or you're going to be just responding to customers all day and not being able to actually market. So make sure you have the right team, the right VAs hired and trained beforehand to support all of this, even before you absolutely need it. And now hopefully everything is ready. You want to start scaling ASAP. And why is that? I mean, it's it's probably obvious. I mean, the, the first thing is that, okay, you're, you're going to be generating a steady cash flow anyways, right? So that's going to uh, prepare for your scaling needs in terms of buying inventory, uh, you know, kind of paying a supplier and things like that. But the other reason why you actually want to start scaling ASAP is that especially if it's a newer product and, you, and, and it just kind of gone through the validation and scaling stage, you want to get as much customer feedback as possible to resolve any quality issues early. You want ideally like hundreds or thousands of orders to arrive before peak Q4 season so that you can be sure that your product is at great quality and that any kind of quality issues are dealt with with the agent and the factory respectively before you start scaling really huge. And also, when you are able to scale a little bit earlier, now or in early October, then you have a much better idea of your inventory plans, all right? You know, how your ads look like as well. You have much more confidence that this is going to work. So you can make the decision to say, hey, I think this is going to work. So let's put down for 5,000 units so we can scale smoothly and let's put logos on them because you have that MOQ anyways. So the earlier you start scaling, the more confident you're going to be and the more likely that you're going to be able to have confidence and make the right decisions through Q4. And this bottom one here is actually super important is uh, every Q4, I see a lot of our clients, especially if they're newer dropshippers, new PayPal accounts, new Facebook, new Stripe accounts, they get blocked, they get holds, shipping is totally fine, everything is totally fine, but simply because they went from zero to like $10,000, $20,000 per day out of nowhere. Uh, look, if you have a new Stripe account, uh, even a Stripe account that's a couple months and it just comes from zero to like, like crazy numbers, you are going to get holds and you do not want that. So the earlier that you can start scaling and a smooth scaling and uh, the better because you build that relationship history with them. And even if you get a hold right now, hopefully you can provide them with the necessary information so that by the time that Q4 really rolls around, PayPal and Stripe, they're going to be much more lenient and not hold 100% of your money for 90 days or whatever it is. All right, so now let's talk about some important dates that everyone should remember as you're thinking about Q4 planning. First is going to be potential China supply chain disruptions. So there's two major ones in Q4. One is actually coming up pretty soon. Uh, that's the October 1st holidays. It's called the Golden Week holidays. 
Now, this is a national holiday, and actually most of China takes seven days off. Uh, the supply chain, Unixpress, for example, they typically only take three days off, and actually we only take three days off as well to make sure that our disruption is as low as possible. So actually our clients are usually fine. However, uh, a lot of suppliers out there are going to take the full seven days or six days, whatever. So you really got to confirm what their situation is and make sure that uh, you're planning for it in advance. The other thing is that factories tend to take longer times off as well. So even though we might be working and fulfilling orders, the possibility that if your factory is uh, taking longer times off, then we have to pre-stock a little bit more inventory beforehand, or you're okay with a little bit more lead time afterwards because factories are catching up because they were off. And then the other big thing is 11-11, November 11. So it's it's Singles Day. It's a made-up holiday by Alibaba just to drive sales. It is the biggest sales day worldwide, five times the size of Black Friday last year. I mean, just absolutely massive. And this causes a huge pressure on the entire supply chain. I mean, factories... Uh, you know, let me tell you guys a little secret, okay? Uh, most factories in China, they do not serve dropshippers mainly. Most factories, they're really for the domestic market. The domestic market is so much larger than the dropshipping market. So during November, early November, late October, factories are going into overdrive preparing for these huge sales during 11-11, which means that you're going to see production delays going into Q4. Now, the good news is that it's 11-11, so at the very least, things seem to cool down in terms of production capacity after 11-11. However, it's obviously something that you should plan for. And the other thing is that China logistics slows to a grind during this season. Now, Unixpress, generally speaking, is a lot better because that doesn't, Unixpress doesn't really serve 11.11 sales. However, if you're using ePacket, AliExpress Standard, all that stuff is going to be severely delayed. So you really have to plan around this holiday as well. I mean, just generally speaking, uh, these two big events, they affect things in different ways for different suppliers. So you just got to make sure that you communicate with your agent in advance and figure out how they will deal with it and plan with you accordingly. Uh, the other thing, obviously, on the kind of marketing and sales side is uh, there's obviously these big sales holidays that you should plan for in advance. I mean, there's Halloween, there's Black Friday, Christmas, and something a lot of people don't know about, actually, Canadians and and uh, and uh, UK folks, they celebrate Boxing Day as well, which is actually a sales day after the holiday. So uh, on the marketing side, obviously, you want to make sure that your messaging is in line with these holidays. We've seen a lot that uh, if you have a Black Friday sale for for example, you actually tend to uh, sell huge volume, but if you don't, you actually tend to get left behind. But the other important thing that you want to plan for these events is because these are obvious times that sales volume just explodes and it spikes many times what it might look like normally, which means that these are holidays that you need to plan around with your supplier if you're running sales during these times because this is uh, where your supply chain is going to be highly pressured and you want to make sure that it is as efficient as possible. All right, everyone. Well, hope that was helpful. I do actually plan for potentially at least one more part in this series, uh, maybe a case study. So please uh, like this video if you liked it, subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications if you want to see more in this series. And we are a premium China fulfillment company, Ecom Op. So if you have consistent orders, uh, 50 orders or more per day or somewhere close, definitely reach out to us. Uh, we plan with our clients far in advance. We're planning with some clients right now already, even without them knowing about it. So we are going to be really the best option, I think, for you to scale your product with and make a lot of money in Q4. So uh, check us out if you're interested. And if you're a current client, uh, if you have big plans in Q4 and we haven't reached out to you yet, most likely we're starting to plan around you already. But if we haven't reached out yet, feel free to reach out to us. Feel free to reach out to your client team and we'll start figuring out how we can make your Q4 as smooth as possible. All right, everyone. Well, thanks again for listening. Uh, again, this is Dayu from Ecom Ops. See you guys next time.